Let's bring up some of this uh, uh, hypocrisy from your traditional liberals. And uh, we have this story from Daily Mail. Liberal Supreme Court justices tear into their colleagues for their, quote, flagrantly unconstitutional decision not to challenge Texas abortion ban while Biden calls it an insult to the rule of law. Mm. So here's my question. There's a bunch of people standing on the Texas state capitol or whatever, and they're chanting like, hands off my body. Why does that only apply to abortion and not vaccines? <laughs> Don't know. Politics, politics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, I do think I, I know I'm getting cynical as I get older. Um, they are both huge industries that have a lot of money and a, and a lot of 401ks and a lot of the abortion industry is an industry. The pharmaceutical industry is an industry and they have vested interests that go much deeper than just the cause. I wish they would just be honest and not use the argument and it would fly better for pe for someone like me, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of coming out and saying, my body, my choice, like those, ch those, those high school kids and those middle school kids were saying the exact same thing. I'm like, okay, what about vaccine mandates? And they're like, shut up. Mm -hmm. That's all, they, all the response <laughs> right. on Twitter when I tweeted this was yeah. all, the, all the establishment left types were just like, Tim Pool is a dim fool, and they're like mm. high five each other, and I'm like, I, you're not, a, you're you're not in this conversation. That's a bad one. That's well, a good one, guys. No, I, that one's actually that, that one's a classic. That's a classic. Tim. Yeah, yeah. The the one that I think is the weakest God. is Pim Tool. It's like, come on, oh, you can yeah. do better Ooh, than that. Little creative. Yeah. You know? yeah, you get throwing some rhymes and they do a little rap. Yeah. No, the point is, if you don't have an argument, you've lost. Yeah. And they don't have an argument, and so if someone if someone said. Um, I think the government should mandate vaccines, and I think I should be allowed to, you know, terminate a pregnancy. It's that simple. I'd be like, okay, hmm. like I disagree with you. Instead, mm -hmm. they're like, I don't think the government should force women, you know, to have medical decisions over their bodies. And I'm like, you don't believe that. Yeah. You're using some kind of liberty-minded talking point to trick people who want freedom. Yeah, they definitely don't believe that because they will be the first ones to say like, let it rain mandates. If people have said, people have said on social, let it rain COVID mandates. Right, so so they don't believe that as a principle; um, they just believe it as a political talking point. This is this is the thing, you know. So it's like when I'm tweeting, people are like, "Why aren't you criticizing conservatives?" And I'm like, "Well, because they were honest with me mm. about what they want to do. They didn't lie. They said straight mm. up, you shouldn't be able to do it.'" And I'm like, "Okay, are you saying you should? I think the government shouldn't intervene and have control over my body." And I'm like, "Oh, okay. So you're protesting the vaccine mandates? No. Mm. So you don't think what you just said? Yeah. Just tell me honestly. Yeah. I think the issue is." The issue of abortion is extremely unpopular. Uh, like, I, I should say, obviously, the issue itself is unpopular, talking about it. But most Americans don't like it. Hmm. They just don't like it. And I think even when it comes to, like, pro-choice groups, it's always, like, with heavy restrictions. And now you have this faction of far leftists hmm. who are, they're, they're not even pro-choice. They're pro-abortion. Hmm. Actively mm -hmm. pro-abortion. Like, CBS, CBS News actually calls them pro-abortion mm -hmm. groups. I was, yeah. I was you know, reading, reading this, and they say pro-abortion. I, I have a, a good friend from Ireland who told me, who knows American politics pretty well, and said the reason why it's never going to be resolved here is because he said in Ireland, in Catholic Ireland, gay marriage and abortion were decided by referendum. Mm -hmm. And he said, and even people who disagree with them know the majority of the people voted a certain way. And he's like, we don't have arguments about abortion and gay marriage. He said, in America, you have them nonstop because the people never felt like they had a chance to voice their vote. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, the abortion ar argument and even the marriage argument, no people ever got to. Now, I think if you gave people the option to, to choose, I think marriage would pass pretty easily. And I think abortion would probably pass, but I think it would be a lot closer. But, but people would at least say, like, I participated in this process, which does govern society. But that didn't happen. A court case happened, and now mm -hmm. the nine justices, heck, Elizabeth Warren was one of the most salient things that I, I even tweeted at her when she said that we need to codify Roe into law um, to stop this from happening. I'm like, so you're admitting it wasn't a law. Yeah. Like, and, and, and if it's not a law, then the people whose duly elected legislators represent them in the, in the Congress, they never participated in the process. And that's, that's thoroughly un-American that these, these, these nine justices are deciding something this consequential. It happens very often. All the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nonstop. Right. Nonstop. That's, that's why the left loves, that's why everyone loves the courts, but that's why the left really loves the courts because they never have the political will to move these agendas forward, so they have to do them through the courts. When it came to the eviction moratorium, the Supreme Court was like, oh, don't look at us. That's Congress. Yeah. But many mm -hmm. other issues, they're like, yes. It wasn't even Congress. It was the CDC. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden you're like, no, I don't no, know, no, the they CDC. Said, they, said the, they said that Congress has to codify. They have to re yeah, exactly. But even the, suddenly the CDC director gets to make rent 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I saw you tweeting <laughs> about that when you were like, this is just, this is my parents' retirement. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. And people are ranting against landlords when the issue is nothing to do with landlords. It has mm-hmm. to do with people who took that money from the COVID relief funds and spent it on other stuff or saved it instead of paying their rent with it. Your parents are rich fat cats. Yeah, I guess so. Who are just so. sitting on all these properties. and <laughs> to tell me about that. Jeez. Um, Florida Senate says legislature ready to replicate Texas abortion bill. So this is interesting because what the left is saying now is it's effectively the end of Roe v. Wade, that women are losing their rights and every Republican state is going to do this. And it's like, but you can still get an abortion. Mm. But isn't this just like a, at some level, just a reactionary move from, you know, uh, consequential red states against the vaccine mandates in blue states and blue cities? The abortion thing? Yeah. No, no, no. You don't think so? No, our Republicans are pro-life. Yeah, but it also feels like a political reaction. I, I don't think so. No, I, I think n- not. So, I, I know exactly what you're saying, and I agree with you. I don't think it's necessarily abortion as a reaction to COVID, but I think red states as a reaction to the culture wars and the Biden administration. Red states are getting red, like mm-hmm. like yeah. really red. And blue states aren't getting bluer. They've always been. I mean, can mm-hmm. you get any bluer than current California and New York, right? Like you, mm-hmm. you can't. Right. But I think red states are really getting redder and i joked you know if the best thing that this this life bill can do in texas is that it will keep them from getting more californians mm-hmm. well yeah you know, which it was probably good for texas yeah. <laughs> people mm-hmm. are saying they're gonna leave yeah good I, we'll go back to california you know and and that's fine that is the 10th amendment that is the spirit of our country and i i am pro-life i admit that but if you want a pro-choice state, make your pro-choice state. I'm just not going to live there. But that's awesome. I'm I'm clearly married to it. Well, I, I'm clearly married, but I'm married to a guy. So clearly I'm, I'm, I'm pro-gay marriage. But if Alabama doesn't want to have gay marriage, I'm not living in Alabama. Is that right? I think that's unfortunate for Alabama because Andrew and I are awesome. But that's the joys of states' rights. You live in Alabama and do all of the Alabama you this want. Is- this is this is really interesting that, that these kind of things come up, though, is because the Supreme Court made rulings. No offense on- to Alabama, by the way. Sorry, I just <laughs> I threw out a state by by. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just I'm, I'm not digging. I, I love the South. Loving v. Virginia. I love the South. Loving v. Virginia. Yeah. The argument from uh, uh, pro uh, the the miscegenation the, the proponents for miscegenation laws was that if these states want to ban interracial cohabitation and marriage, then don't live there. And mm. so there were like my family, for instance. My, my mom's side forced to flee different states when people found out because it was literally illegal for them to be in, in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I think that makes no sense. And so the Supreme Court said it violates the Constitution, the supreme law of this country to tell someone for these reasons that's, that are arbitrary. And so I think the same thing is true of, of gay marriage. Mm. I think if, you know, we're going to uphold someone's constitutional rights, right to privacy and right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness and the privacy of their own home makes sense for the Supreme Court to say, you can't do this as per the Constitution. Hmm. And that means sometimes things happen you don't like. Yeah. Sometimes they'll, they'll, there'll be some Supreme Court rulings. You're like, man, that one's bad. But uh, you got to trust that. I guess you got you to trust that to, um, when, we, when we vote, we get good judges. And then, you know, you're doing your, your civic duty to get Supreme Court justices appointed. The, the main issue it, it, for, that I see is the Democrats talking about stacking the courts because they've lost it. Mm. They've lost the, the argument. Idea. And that's when things go south. Because yeah. right now, if it's like, if the Supreme Court issues a ruling I don't agree with, we get active and we say, okay, we're going to fight, you know, politically to, to, to change hearts and minds and win the causes we do want. But if they say they're going to stack the courts, then the process is done. Hmm. There's no path by which you can win other than just manipulating the system. And that's the collapse. That is the rich, obnoxious kid whose birthday party you invited to who had a win because it was his birthday party. Hmm. And every time he was losing, they would change the rules so that Timmy one because it was his party you know and (laughs) and that's exactly it there are democrat senators who are blasting the filibuster as a relic of jim crow when a year ago senator tim scott who is black who's a republican they were filibustering his criminal justice reform (laughs) bill the same senators who filibustered a black republican last year are now saying we can't have the filibuster because it's full of racism and Jim Crow. I hate the Democrats, man. But you you just can't change the system when you lose. And sometimes you lose. We lost in 2020, right? We lost in 2018. Um, We being Republicans, I'm not even a Republican, but I'm trying to make a point. Right. Sometimes yeah. you lose and, and that stinks, but you got to re-rally the troops and I, you got to have better messaging and better conviction and better. But you can't just change the damn rules every time. The, the year is not 2003. We are not living in the era of the neocons anymore. The populist right, the, the, the MAGA crowd, the Trump supporters, 
they they stormed into the Republican Party, and it's very different from what it used to be. But there's still many establishment and neocon Republicans that are still in office. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you this. I, I don't like the Republican Party because they are spineless, mm-hmm. weak, mm-hmm. and they just do nothings. Mm-hmm. Why should I care about a group of people who don't do anything and are bad at it? I disagree with a lot of them on their ideas. I can agree with some of the rhetoric around freedom. Mm-hmm. And then I like some people who ran as Republicans but are clearly much more libertarian like Rand Paul or Thomas Massey. But I view the Republicans as, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Tell me, tell, you know, I, I remember back when Trump was being impeached and stuff, I was talking to my mom about this. And she was like, you know, I don't hear you talk about the Republicans at all, all that often. I said, oh, what'd they do? When, in 2016, when they had control of everything, what did they do? Oh, they were on board with yeah. Russiagate. Oh, okay. So my complaints about, you know, Russiagate involve them. them. The Democrats are evil. You know, and, and maybe it's a little bit hyperbolic to say, because not every single person who's running as a Democrat is a bad person. There, there are a, a decent amount, that, you know, handful that are good people, just like the Republican Party has theirs. Mm. But when you look at how they lie, cheat, and steal mm. over and over and over again, yeah, I know the Republican Party was the exact same way. It was the Uniparty. They were the same thing. But the Republican Party is something way different now. It's a mess. Mm. You know, you've got populist right-wing individuals that are running for Congress, who's going to make a very big change. And then you've got the populist left that is coming into the Democratic Party. And I think they're authoritarian crackpots. At least with the with the wave of right wing populists, they tend to be more libertarian. So yeah. so I'll tell you what my concern is. Democrats saying vaccine mandates. Yeah. I'm like, oh, OK, you're an authoritarian. And here, take the government mandated medical procedure, regardless of what your doctor says, is insane to me. No medical or religious exemptions. That's insane. It's an infringement of your constitutional rights. Texas and Florida, red states, they're like, no, nah, we're not going to do any of that. No, and that's like, not true. This this abortion thing's a violation of your constitutional right to get an abortion, in my opinion. You have a constitutional right I mean, to get an what? abortion? I mean, you have freedom. There's no, nothing says you can't. What do you, what, does, what do you mean? I mean, the courts ruled, you know, you're allowed to. So I don't think they said it was a constitutional right. Well, it's, the, well, it's been interpreted the that argument. way over Court, the last yeah. 50 years, but yeah. it's not. It, it's, I mean, the Constitution is pretty It's been, interp- right. it's precise been interpreted. It doesn't mention it. It is a right. And well, for these it, authoritarians to come in and, and say, we're going to make it so you can't now because it's my spiritual belief. Like, get off my back, dude. But even even this this case, though, I mean, it, it's it's getting blown out of proportion that this is now the beginning of the repeal of Roe, and it's really not. This is the this is the courts saying, you filed suit against a law that hasn't even gone into effect yet, and and you don't have the right. This is a little premature. Like 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 don't don't shoot your load just yet. Let's actually let the. Sorry, that was really vulgar. I, I, right just, as I, I appreciate it. it. Personally, as soon I like as it. I said it, I was like, oh, my right. God, did I just say that? <laughs> I, I am so sorry. I've been saying viral so, love like, for weeks. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm, I, think, I think politics being politics, this is getting blown up as like, that's it, Roe is now over. And this is the court saying, um, let's actually have a challenge to the law before right. you bring it to the Supreme Court to saying this land co- law can't go into an effect yet. There needs to be someone who, who is negatively impacted by it to yes. then be able to challenge it. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.